I'm Beth Kramer, and I'm here with John Boyd. And today we're going to talk about ebooks. Uh, we're going to start with a brief overview of the ebooks available at Appalachian State and describing what is available to you. Um, that's going to be followed by John and I highlighting three of our ebook resources that would be Overdrive, EBSCO Host, and eBrary, with some tips for downloading ebooks onto your personal devices. Then John is going to demonstrate how to find ebooks in our library catalog. And last, John is going to tell you about a helpful resource at Appalachian, the ebook collections library guide. So, how many ebooks and what type of ebooks do we have available? At Appalachian, we have literally thousands of ebooks in our library catalog. At least half of these titles are primary source materials that are dated 1500s to present, and those include rare books, pamphlets, broadsides, etc. But we also have hundreds of thousands of current imprints, ebooks from every discipline. We purchase these ebooks through a variety of vendors such as EBSCO, eBrary, Overdrive, and others. Due to lack of standardization, each of the different vendors has a different way of displaying and notating the ebooks and different methods in which to download the ebooks to your personal devices. As examples of the different vendors, John and I will be focusing on three vendors to illustrate the differences. I'll begin with an overall description of OverDrive. And regrets, uh, John and Kelly are telling me that the sound is a bit muffled. Better now? Okay, it's better now. Great. So we'll commence. You all want to know about OverDrive. What is OverDrive? It's an ebook resource that allows you to read ebooks and listen to audiobooks on a wide variety of personal devices, including your tablets, your smartphones, and your computers. The large majority of our OverDrive ebooks can be downloaded to a Kindle device or a Kindle app, something that is not yet available through almost all of our other ebook vendors. Via Overdrive, you can check out to three, up to three items at a time, and the checkout period is for three weeks. And one of the best things about Overdrive is that you don't have to remember to return your books on time. They can never be overdue because at the end of the three weeks, the items will automatically be checked back into the system. Now, to find ebooks and audiobooks from Overdrive, you begin at our library's homepage, which is on the screen here. Under the heading Find Information, you'll want to click on the Databases and eResearch link. In the upper left hand corner, you will find the alphabet representing an alphabetical list of databases. Here, you'll want to click O for OverDrive. In finding OverDrive in the list of titles, you'll notice that there's an I here to the right hand side across from OverDrive. Click on this icon for additional help for information about what OverDrive is, and you'll notice that there's a hot link here to the library guide for ebooks. John will be talking about this important resource in more detail later in our presentation. Clicking on the OverDrive hot link, either here or within the database list, takes you directly to our OverDrive homepage with a listing of all of our ebooks and audiobooks available. As listed at the top of the screen, you can see our content in OverDrive that includes both ebooks here and here and audiobooks, both in fiction and nonfiction. We have foreign language study guides, both in ebook form and as audiobook. So if you want to learn Italian, you can download the uh, Italian for Dummies ebook, plus download a Pimsleur resource for studying uh, Italian using your uh, audiobook app that you have on your resource. We also have travel guides that you can download for our students and faculty and staff that are traveling abroad. We have study guides, or called study aids in this resource, for entrance and professional exams plus popular reading material in both ebook and audiobook form. 
we also have a large selection of titles specifically for children's and teens. Ebooks are marked with the, e the book icon as you see teaching kids to think. Audiobooks are marked with the headset icon such as the example of unruly places. Switching to our most popular titles, you can see that the girl on the train is currently checked out because of the lightened icon here at the book as opposed to John Grisham's Grey Mountain which is currently available. Once you find a book that interests you, you simply click on the title, hover over the title and click borrow. At this point you will be prompted to log in with a banner ID. Once you have done that, check, put in your banner ID, you can read the book within your browser. This is by far the simplest way to read your ebook, but it requires that you have the internet connection. I'm sorry, right here, read in your browser. Once you do this, it brings the book up, and under the menu, it lists current options for working within the ebook. You can get an overview overview of the ebook which includes different reviews of the book. You can actually search through the book with your keyword searching. You can get a list of chapters to serve as an index. You also have different ways to mark the ebook for future reference. In this case you can highlight material within the ebook or you can click on the bookmark. You also have readability settings. You can use your current background of black print on a white background or you can reverse that so you have white print on a black background. You can also increase the size of the text. This is particularly helpful on your iPhone if the text is too small. Another option in reading the book instead of reading it on your desktop browser is to download the title onto a personal reading device. What I prefer to do is to download the book onto my Kindle app on my iPhone in order to allow me to read the book wherever I find myself, regardless of whether or not I have a steady connection to the internet. And while the procedure for downloading ebooks to your Kindle app on your iPhone is not extremely difficult, the many steps needed to set this up can seem somewhat confusing to some when they're just starting out. In order to download ebooks to your Kindle reading device or app, it's necessary to have downloaded the OverDrive Media Console onto your device, to have an Amazon account set up, and to either have a Kindle reading device or have downloaded the Kindle app onto your smartphone or tablet. Download instructions for a large variety of personal devices are available on the OverDrive site or via the eBook Collection Library Guide. And what I'll suggest to the group is if you would like, I will show you how to do this procedure, this process, but you're always welcome to come into the library and to call John or myself or one of the other librarians available to help you walk you through the process since we've done it previously ourselves, for ourselves and for other patrons. To get to the online help for OverDrive, you simply go up to the right-hand side upper right hand corner and you click on the help button. From here it's a process of choosing pretty much whatever makes sense and here you're looking for OverDrive help so you click on that which takes you to the next screen and scrolling down a little bit you can see the getting started icon that looks a little bit like somebody pointing at a belly button. And that takes you to a screen here which gives you some basic information and scrolling down actually gives you information about the individual types of resources that you might want to be using in reading these books. Since I am downloading books onto my Kindle app on an iPhone, I select the Kindle instructions and getting started with Kindle reading apps because that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be reading my Kindle books, my e-books through my Kindle reader on my phone. 
which makes it an app. And once you do that, you have a series of videos here that walk you through the process of what you will need to do to get started in reading ebooks on your personal device via a Kindle app. And again, I just want to stress that if you would like, please bring your personal devices into the library and allow one of us to assist you. We've done it several times and it can make it an easy process for you. So back to the process of actually getting the book on your app. Once you have the OverDrive Media Console app, an Amazon account, and the Kindle app downloaded, the actual process of transferring eBooks from OverDrive to my iPhone is very simple and something that really benefits me as a heavy reader. From my OverDrive bookshelf, which is where we're at right now, that contains the books that I have at this point checked out, I tap on the download drop down selection box and check Kindle eBook. Here I confirm and get Kindle book. And at this point I need to sign in to my Amazon account and then I hit over here in the right hand corner I just select get the library book. Okay, and if you read the message at the top, it says, Thanks, Elizabeth Kramer. Your digital library book, Gone Girl, a novel, will be delivered the next time your Kramer EE syncs, which means the next time that I open my Kindle app. And the best thing about doing this is I have approximately 60 books downloaded onto my iPhone. So wherever I'm going, wherever I'm traveling, I have virtually a whole library with me to read although I do enjoy reading print as well. So, to give you an example, uh, in traveling uh, that I was fortunate enough to do last year, I was able to download a travel guide to the country I was visiting. I was able to download an audio book which helped me practice the language that was going to be spoken in that country that I was visiting. And I was also able to just download a book for my personal reading to carry with me. And when I finished that book, all I needed anywhere in the world was a Wi-Fi connection in order to take that book off of my Kindle and to put a new book on, saving me both the weight of carrying these books and availability of hundreds of titles to read at any time during my travel. So big fan of OverDrive. Please, if you want more information or any help, come see John and I or any of our other librarians that have had experience with this. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to John. Good afternoon. This is John Boyd, and I'm glad to be here with you this afternoon. And I want to give out a shout out to Kelly McAllister for always being great and helping, helping us set these up. Um, and if at any time, if you have any questions, there's um, the chat box there. You can type in your questions, and we'll we'll try to get to any questions you may have. What I want to talk about is uh, locating um, ebooks through our library catalog and also through App Search. So I'm first just going to do a quick search in App Search, which searches library databases, approximately 50, and also our library catalog. So I'm just going to do a search of inequality and economics. And if you go over to the left column, you're going to see source types and you'll see ebooks. And I click on ebooks and I'm going to it's going to limit them. It's going to bring up just ebooks that we have in the library. That's using App Search. I'm also going to go into just the library catalog, which is the books and media tab. And I just want to show you the process for that as well. And I'm just going to do the same search, inequality and economics. And do a search. And I, I, before I um, go in and show you how you can limit the ebooks, I just want to show you that um, the first two books that come up, the first one is a print book. Anytime you see ASU Main Stacks, you probably know this, that is a print book. The second one is an example of an ebook, and you're going to see online access right there below the title. 
Um, the other thing I want to highlight for you is that you see single user. Uh, the vast majority of our ebooks are multiple users. I'd say um, probably 95% of them are multiple user, meaning 20 people at the same time could access that ebook. There are a small percentage of ebooks that are single user, and that's due to licensing issues, which means if I open up this ebook and look at it, it nobody else would have access to that ebook to that ebook until I'm done using it and, or until I close the browser, then they could get access. So just be aware of that. If you ever see an ebook that you're trying to get into and you're unable, it's, it, it's probably because it's a single user. We try to get most of our ebooks as multiple users, but sometimes we're, we're unable just because uh, either publishing restrictions or it's just too expensive to do multiple users. So if I wanted to just this search I've done right here, if I wanted to limit it just to ebooks, I can go up to modify search, which is right above the search box, and I can material type. I can limit to material type, and you can also limit to just um, printed books by clicking on book right there. But I'm just going to scroll down. I'm going to limit to ebooks, and then submit. And there you're going to see all of these are going to be ebooks. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the second ebook. So, yeah, the economics of screening and risk sharing in higher education. This is just a full record of the ebook. I have some additional information besides the title, publishing, and author. I also have a short summary of the book. And I'm going to go ahead and click to this resource. And this is going to take us to uh, one of the two collections I'm going to highlight, and this is eBrary. We have approximately uh, about 100 to 125,000, somewhere in that area, um, books available through eBrary. And ProQuest is just the name of the company that provides access to eBrary. I can always read the books online. And you'll see right here, one of the options is read online, and then you also see download. So I can go to read online. And this is obviously the simplest way to read an ebook. Um, it's always going to be available as long as you have an internet connection. And also, if it's uh, multiple user, and like I said, most of them are uh, multiple users. Um, over on the left, and you, you can change the size of the screen. There are a number of different options for you right here across the top, and you can minimize the size of the book. You can go to Table of Contents. And I can adjust the size of the book. Um, you ha also have a number of options here with these icons across the top. One thing you can do, you can do a chapter download, which is um, also an easy way to get a uh, part of the book to an, a tablet or to a iPhone without requiring apps or um, um, accounts within eBrary. You could just do a chapter download and it gives you a couple of options here. I can do the current chapter or I can do a page range. Generally, you'll go into a chapter that, that is the easiest way to do it and it's going to download it as a PDF file. And um, you can also add notes to the text. You can highlight in order to do note taking or highlighting. It's going to ask you to sign in. That way, anytime you would access this book uh, for you know next week or next month, your notes would remain with the book. You have to create an account. And it's just um, some basic information. Basically, you're creating a username and a password to create an account. But that enables you to make notes, have the no notes remain with your book, um, highlight uh, passages within the book that you want to remember. And you can also search within the book. Over here on the left above the table of contents, it gives you the op option to search within that book. So th this is just a quick introduction to the eBrary interface. Um, the other one I'm going to show you is ebook collection from EBSCO. 
And if I scroll down here, I eventually would probably find, let's see, I may, I may just go directly to ebook collection. Now, okay, here's one that's coming from EBSCO. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you another interface. And this is the interface that's coming through EBSCO. And we also, approximately 100 to 125,000 books are available through EBSCO. And once again, you can always read the book online. And this is what their online interface looks like. And they give you options to change the size of what you're looking at. They have a table of contents over here on the left. Over on the left also above the title of the book, you can search within the book. You can save pages. And when you do that, it gives you an option that you can save this section, this chapter, actually 40 pages. Number of pages available are 100. So you could actually um, save 100 pages of this book. You just click on Save PDF. It's going to open up a PDF file, and you will have that information available. It's not going to give you the option to save the entire book as a PDF file. Anytime you do the Save Pages or you do Email Pages, it's going to give you an option of how much you can uh, save. And it's, it's going to vary. Sometimes it'll be 40 to 50 pages. Sometimes it'll be up to 100 pages. And I just want to show you, and, and here's the option to download this ebook. And I just want to walk through those steps um, and just mention that the first time you do this and to set up your tablet or your iPhone to do this, you're thinking, this is a pain. I do not want to do this. If you feel that way, come see us, or there are also EBSCO and eBrary also provide um, help pages that will walk you through the steps. If you're used to having a Kindle and having and going into Amazon and easily downloading a book, well, it's not going to be quite like that. Um, for one thing, Kindle does, or Amazon does, does not want to work with these other companies to make it easy to download their books to uh, your smartphone. Kindle, Amazon wants you to go to their site and use their ebook reader to download books. So you do have to go through a number of steps. You first have to have an EBSCO account in order to download it um, to your device. And so it gives you a link here to create a new account or sign into my EBSCO host account. And so I'm going to do that here real quick because I want to show you what the next screen looks like. And let's see if I remember my password. Yes. Okay, so now download this book offline, and so I can download it to my desktop, but I, I want to enlarge the screen here so you can see that checkout period by default is 21 days. You can choose less. That's the maximum we can set. I don't know if 21 days is, an, it is enough time for most people, but you do have up to 21 days, and as Beth mentioned with Overdrive, it automatically will be returned at the end of 21 days. But what I want to bring out here are viewing requirements. So if you're downloading to your desktop, you're required to have Adobe Digital Editions, which you can go to the Adobe website and download that for free. Um, and then the next one says Apple and Android devices. Blue Fire Reader is recommended. I just want to point out that is what you would need if Blue Fire, if you have an Android. Um, for Apple devices, um, EBSCO now just released as in the past month, they have their own ebook app. And I'm going to show you how you can get access to that. And if you have a Kindle, PDFs can be created in the ebook full text view and transferred, sent to Kindle. So you can only transfer PDF files. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to change this to one day and check out and download. And then I have Adobe Digital Editions on my desktop. And so right now it's asking to open with Adobe Digital Editions. I'm going to do that. 
And right now what's loading is Adobe Digital Editions. And I, in the past, um, when I've downloaded my own books to my desktop, occasionally this is a point sometimes it doesn't always work. So I'm still waiting for that to come up. And here, it's, here it comes. There it is. So I'm, I have it to my desktop. So it, um, it just means that I have the entire book there. I can look at it any time. Um, I've got the complete book. I don't have to worry about downloading chapters and so forth. Okay, so let me close that. Okay. And let's go ahead and what we're going to do next is I just also want to show you how you can get to these two um, sites here. I'm going to go back and do a new search. Well, now let's go back to the, actually, I want to go back to the um, library's homepage and go to find information databases and e-research and if you go to the e's you're going to see ebook collection right there and right below it ebrary okay i also just want to point out one other thing when you're searching the library catalog i'm going to do united states civil war slavery as a search. And the first thing that comes up is something from 1915. 1915. It brings it up by relevancy. Here's something from 1900. In our collections, we have a lot of primary source material that goes back to the 17th, 18th century. So if you're looking for recent, typical ebook type material, this is what you need to do. You need to modify your search, first of all. Go down to material type to ebooks and submit. Then at the top, the results I brought up by as an ebook are by relevance. I'm going to change that to date and it's going to bring up the most recent first. And here you're going to see some of the typical ebooks that you that we have available for you through EBSCOhost and through ProQuest eBrary. So just be aware of that. Um, if I go back to relevance, then you're going to see some of that primary source material, which are eBooks. You may get entire eBooks, but they could be from, you know, United States Civil War. It could be a book that was written in 1870. So just be aware of that. Okay, what I want to next do is talk about the library guide for ebooks, and that's under How Do I, and there's a third link, Browse Library Guides. And under Research Tools, you'll see ebook collections. You can also search for it up here in this box, just put in ebooks. This is a guide to our ebook resources here at Belk Library gives you information on how to search the library catalog, which I just talked about. It gives you a list of all the various ebook collections we have. The two largest ones we have are eBrary and eBook Collection. We, we also have eBooks coming from Business Expert, Learning Express. A lot of um, test uh, guides are in there. Um, there's OverDrive. We also have a lot of uh, technology, computer-related books in Safari. Um, we have a lot of books from Oxford Press and Oxford Scholarship Online. Of course, there are thousands, if not millions, of public domain eBooks, which are available to everyone. And, and this just, the public domain eBooks gives you access to some of the sites that have that, those type of books. There's a link to OverDrive, gives you more information about OverDrive. Um, I'm going to come back to S EBSCO and eBrary here real quick. I want to show you eBook basic, um, yeah, eBook basics. Yes, this little chart. I just want to bring this to your attention. It gives you information about the product itself, what the format they're in, checkout period. Can you download the eBook to uh, uh, your smartphone? Can you print pages and are there simultaneous use for the ebooks? Um, we have a lot of different package. There's no standardization at this point. It's all up to the 
um, provider of these ebooks as far as what you can do or not do. So eBrary, you have a 10 to 60 page maximum. Some of the collections, individual arc, uh, articles. Other collections, you can do only a page at a time. Some you can do a chapter. Downloading um, or checkout is not available on some of our collections, meaning you can only view it online. So this is just a little go-to chart that gives you some basic information about the eBooks. I now just want to go to the EBSCO and eBrary tab. And if you do want to download something to your smart device, to your um, tablet or phone, the first um, and the easiest way to do it are downloading chapters. And so these first two columns here are just walk you through the steps of downloading to a chapter at a time. But I know there are also people who, hey, I don't want a chapter, I want the whole book. And so if you, you'll get information within this first box about downloading with eBrary. But I'm just going to highlight the EBSCOhost uh, collection right here. Um, so this just tells you what you need on your device in order to set it up. So you need an EBSCOhost account. You need an Adobe ID. That's a free ID. That's to authorize your device. That's a one-time uh, thing to do. And then if um, you have an iPhone or iPad, an Apple device, you go to the iTunes App Store. And this is the eBook app. Just came out. Uh, I've used it. It's very easy to use. Works pretty well so far. There's information if you have a Kindle, Kindle, Kindle Fire or Nook. There's information right here on, on what you need. And then it walks you to and gives you the steps and what you need to do in order to download it to your device. So once you have those accounts or those apps on your smartphone, you're going to access ebooks through your smart, dev smart device. Let's just say your iPhone. You're going to go to our website. You can go to the library catalog, and you're going to go access the ebooks that way. Um, and then you're going to, when you're ready to download, it's automatically going to take you into your ebook app from EBSCO. So it's easiest to download from within the app as opposed to downloading it, to, say, to your desktop, then transferring it to your device. The easiest way to do it is to have your device open, go to our library uh, website, and then find the book. And then once you're ready to download the book, it will load the app for you, and you'll be able to read it. OK. So I'm. Uh, Interested if you have any um, questions, um, we'll be happy to entertain those questions. Um, one thing I also want to mention about the, the EBSCO, e, um, EBSCO collection, the, their um, app that they just released, you're going to be asked to log in when you're ready to download a book. And that is going to be the EBS, your EBSCO account. You need to create an account with EBSCO in order to do that. Um, it's not, when it asks you for that login, it's not asking you for your ASU username and password. You're actually within the EBSCO ebook app, and you're going to log into your EBSCO account. So we will entertain questions, and I definitely want to encourage you to, if you do have questions um, and you know you want to stop by the library, we'd be happy to help you. There are also a lot of links on this page, this library guide over here on the left, more ebooks help. Um, there's some really nice tutorials that EBSCO and eBrary have put up that will walk you through all the steps. Um, to get ebooks on your devices. So, but we're also, you know, real happy to help you as well. If you want a personal touch, come see us and we'll do it together.